desktop. Before that, uh, does anyone have any questions about chapter four? No questions? Question 10 on web sign. Question 10 on web sign. Regarding the um, apa, lecture, lecture ada soalan tak? Tak ada. Okay, like web sign tu, um, I'm going to come back to that. Eh? Right. Uh, so, we're going to start on chapter 5. So, today we are doing linear momentum. Linear momentum, we have three subtopics which is impulse and momentum, conservation of linear momentum and collision. Does anyone know what momentum is? We have seen the equation for momentum in chapter chapter four, good. Chapter four, uh -uh. ke three, tak ingat. But we have seen it before. I talked about uh, what happens if we have varying mass. Apa dia? Kenapa tu? Is everyone with me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. What was the screaming about? Tadi siapa yang scream? Okay. Remember I told you about varying the mass and what happens? There was a topic on this. I forgot which chapter. But we are coming back to this, a linear momentum. Okay, so after completing this chapter, you should be able to get free. Yeah, Jafi, can I have a? Oh, uh, so, sorry, tengah set up, tengah set up ni. Kita oh. buka mic. Alright. Okay, so after completing this chapter, you must be able to calculate impulse and momentum. Okay, state impulse momentum theorem, state the conservation of linear momentum, solve problems related to collision. So this is your learning outcome that you should be able to master lah to job exam nanti. Alright, so impulsive force. In practice, the force that acts on the object is a time varying force. For example, uh, you have a bullet. Oh, I have an example that I've drawn. <laughs> it's a bad drawing. Okay. This one. Okay, this one. So you have a bullet. This is your bullet. And it is traveling at a certain velocity u, right? To the east, to the right. And then it meets, gonna meet, it collides with a wooden block. Okay, this is a wooden block. And then collision happens. This collision is called impulse. Okay, where there is a certain force and time associated with it. So impulse is F times with delta T. Okay. All right, so this impulse is Usually for force, we label it as capital F, right? And time as T. For impulse, it's capital I. So impulse is capital I. All right, we'll, we'll come back to this example, but I just wanted to show you when a bullet collides with a wooden block or anything, mass one collides with mass two, object one collides with object two, there will be a collision and that collision involves force and time. And that is called as impulse, okay? So this um, collision is represented, can be represented by a graph as always. Physics always loves graphs. So here we had the force. The force was increasing over time and it reached a peak here. Oh, so salah tak pakai drawing. Okay, let me do this. Red, okay. So the force reached a peak at T something. Let's say at T equals to 0 0.1 millisecond. This is time equals to zero. This is time equals to 0 0.2 millisecond. All right, so it reached a peak at 0 0.1. This is where the force is the highest. Force is greatest or highest. OK, 
Okay, so at this time, the wooden block feels the most pain because of banyak force lah kan? But to calculate for the impulse using this graph is rather complicated because it's not um, it's not a square or a um, triangle. So it's hard to approximate. So what they did is they said, okay, let's just approximate this with F average. The time starts, uh, the time is considered from the initial time to the final, but the F average is half of the peak. So that is your F average. So the F average is just the area of this square. Okay, kalau kita buang ni, the F average and the time makes a square, right? So that is how you calculate for impulse. So F times T is impulse. So if they give you a force versus time graph, you can find impulse by multiplying the force with time. Macam mana nak cari? Take the F average and times it with the change in time. So change in time is delta T, right? So this guy over here is just delta T. Delta T is T final minus T initial. Okay. And then you have your F average. So that is F A V times with delta T. Okay. So if they give you a graph, you should be able to find impulse. Okay. So a graph is senang just patutnya. Okay. Impulse is defined as the product of the average force delivered to the object normally in a very, very short time. Okay, it's if, macam when we collide pun, the collision happens in split second, right? So it's at a very, very short time, typically in milliseconds. Milli is times 10 to the minus 3 seconds, okay? So the SI unit is kilogram meter per second or Newton second. Okay, so we can understand that force is Newton and time is second. So Newton second is pretty straightforward. But how do we get the kilogram meter per second? Uh, F equals to MA, right? So MA is kilogram meter per second squared. And then time is just S. So you get to cancel that out. So it becomes kg meter per second. Okay, if you can't figure out the SI unit, uh, if you don't want to use this guy over here, just solve for F, MA times with second. So you get your kilogram meter per second. Kilogram meter per second is just mass times velocity, right? But I told you before, if we have a delta, we cannot simply remove it because delta means a change. So if my mass is constant, that change is given by the velocity, delta V. So impulse is also mass times the change in velocity if my mass is constant. Okay. And we have seen this before juga. This is momentum P, P equals to MV. The change in momentum gives us the change in, sorry, the change in velocity gives us the change in momentum. Okay, so to simplify this, Momentum is P equals to MV. We have seen this before. M is kilogram. This guy is meter per second. Or Newton second. You can also use that. And then the change in momentum is given by this guy. We have seen this equation before. And most of the time our mass is constant. So this becomes a zero. We are left with delta P equals to mass times delta V. Right? And then they said delta P, the rate of change of momentum is delta P over delta T. So if I'm putting a delta T over here, I have to put a delta T over these two guys as well. And this guy is a zero because we are assuming constant mass. So this guy, delta V over delta T is just M A, right? The, the rate of velocity is acceleration and the rate of change of momentum is, I don't know, it's just that. So if I were to rearrange this, right, 
So this becomes delta P equals to MA delta T, which is F delta T, which is I. Yay. So again, I proved to you that I is just delta P or F delta T. So this is the equation that you need to remember apart from P equals to MV. Okay. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Not, does anyone want me to repeat that? Okay, eh? everyone's okay? Okay, okay. so, okay, eh? all right. So again, uh, if there is a delta, that delta cannot, you cannot simply make it vanish. Eh? If there is a delta, it means either mass delta V or delta M V. It, the delta has to happen. You cannot just simply make it go away. You have to put it in your equation on both sides. All right. So if there is a delta P, it means either you have a change in velocity or you have a change in mass. But most of the cases, we have a change in velocity. Okay, remember, do not get rid of your delta for no reason. Okay. All right. So impulse momentum theorem. The rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the force acting on the object. So we have seen that delta P over, del over delta T is equal to force. Mm, yes, okay. And then we, we put the delta T next to force, we, we get delta P. And we just solve that I equals to delta P. So that is our equation. Therefore, impulse is the change in momentum, okay? Mm, okay, same thing. All right. So problem solving strategy, read and understand the question, visualize and sketch the situation as always. Identify the mass, initial velocity, final velocity. So now you have U, F and mass for your momentum and impulse, right? Apply the impulse momentum theorem, which is F equals to, sorry, I equals to F delta T. I equals to F delta T or the change in momentum. Substitute the known values and calculate the required unknown value. You know this, take your answer, do not forget your units. All right, so let's do an example. Example 5.1, a tennis player receives a shot with the ball traveling horizontally and returns the shot with the ball traveling horizontally at 40 meters per second in the opposite direction. So imagine a tennis player. Uh, do I want to draw this or do I want to use an icon? Let's use an icon. So I know I'm going to fail at drawing a tennis player. Let's use tennis player. Okay, Sajiju. Oh, I do. Nice. Oh, is this a tennis player? No, it's not. Tapi tak apalah kita pakai je. Hello, insert. Oh, okay. okay, so this is my tennis player. Draw. Wait. This is my tennis player. Or badminton, or tennis. Tak apalah, tak kisah. So, they receive a shot. Mula-mula, the ball travels horizontally towards him. Allah, tinggi sangat pula. Okay, so the ball travels towards him, right, horizontally at 50 meter per second. Okay, so this is our situation. This is our U, right? And then, he returns the shot. Maksudnya dia pukul. Dia pukul bola tu. The ball goes the other way at 40 meter per second. In the opposite direction lah. Right, so this is your ball. Okay, so collision happens between the racket and the ball. So what impulse is delivered to the ball by the racket? And what work does the racket do on the ball? Yes, any questions? Is everyone following me? Okay, ke? Yeah. Right. Okay, so if we were to just um, 
uh, identify the equations that we are going to use. So impulse, uh, I equals to F delta T or delta P, right? Momentum. We know that momentum is MV, so this can be M delta V. Our mass does not change. Our mass of ball does not change. Delta V is mass times V final minus V initial or V minus U. Same thing. So the impulse of this guy is 0 0.06. I mean, not this guy, the impulse of the ball. And then you have your V going to the right. Let's say to the right is positive. So this is positive 40. And our VI or our U is minus 50. Okay. So our impulse is... I don't have a calculator. I haven't bought one yet. Can anyone calculate this for me? Negative 0 0.6. Negative 0 0.6. And the units for this is? Doctor. Yeah? Uh, kan yang initial tu kan 50 kan? Mm -hmm. So the to the left kan dia negative. So oh. final minus initial so is it? Plus kan? Yep, yep, betul, betul. You are correct. Thank you. Okay, so that's 0 0.06 times 90. Thank you. Saya pun terlupa. 5.4. 5.4. Yeah. So what is the unit for impulse? What is the unit for impulse? KG MS negative 1. KG meter negative 1. <laughs> okay. Or Newton second. Boleh juga. This guy. Newton second pun boleh. Alright, so both are accepted. So that is your answer for impulse. What work does the racket do on the ball? Okay, so we have velocity and we are looking into what work is done. Let's of this. Anyone ha has an idea on how to find the work? Do we have an, an equation that relates work to kinetic energy or velocity? Do we? Change of kinetic energy. What about it? Change of kinetic energy. Change of kinetic energy equals to? Uh, K final. No, no, no. KE. What, is, what does delta KE mean? Work. 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 Right? Because work is anything. Uh, any changes to energy. So we have a change in our kinetic energy. So we have work. Great. Good job. Okay, so now I'm going to expand this equation. So we have Ke final minus Ke initial. And our Ke final is 1 over 2 mv squared. Our v is 40. Minus 1 over 2 m50. Is that right? Say salah. Okay, minus n. Tapi... It becomes a squared, so it doesn't matter. So, 40. Okay, so what is the answer to the work done? Mass is 0 0.06. This guy becomes a positive value. Can anyone calculate this for me? I really don't have a calculator, seriously. Okay, apa KE final? KE final berapa? Uh, total negative 27. Total is negative 27. Eh? Uh -uh. Okay, did everyone? Yes. yes. 
Okay. What's the unit for work? Uh, joule. Joules. Okay. Remember we talked about the work energy, no, kinetic, apa, work energy theorem ke? Sekejap, apa nama dia? 4, chapter 4, chapter 4. Work energy theorem. Okay, work energy theorem says, mana? Saya tak nak baca. Tak lupa. Okay, a positive work will increase the speed of object. A negative work will decrease the speed of object. I also added something. If you have positive work, you are increasing in energy. If you have negative work, you are decreasing in energy. So now we have a negative work. What does that mean? It's not. The ball loses energy, right? From its initial condition, they lose energy. Eh? So the final condition, they punya energy lagi kurang daripada initial. All right, so that was the example. Any questions for me? So ada kaitan sikit eh, dengan chapter 4. Any questions for me uh, about this question in particular? Okay ke? Faham ke? Uh, doktor. Uh, dia nak work dekat racket ke dekat ball? What work does the racket do on the ball? Oh, good job. What work does the racket do on the ball? So the ball had the energy, so it loses energy. So if it loses energy, so the racket is increasing in energy. Hmm, good job. Work done by the racket on the ball. But the ball decreases energy. So positive lah kan? Because we are asking what the racket does on the ball. So saya terbalik. So this is the ball. Alamak, alamak. Uh. Oh, you are right. You, you have masters, mastered the skill of understanding the question. Okay, so this guy is the ball loses energy. Betul, betul. We are talking about the ball but we did not notice that we are asking about the racket. So the ball loses energy, so the ball loses energy, so the racket gains. If we are assuming that conservation of energy occurs here. Eh? So the racket gains energy, which is 27, assuming conservation of energy. Lah. Okay, but this chapter um, does not conservation of energy ada but not in this sense so but we still have the friction blah, 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 and we don't talk about it Faham tak? so let's just stick with the ball loses the energy and tak payah fikir pasal racket lagi boleh tak? because if I were to talk about the racket there's a bunch of other factors so let's change this question Change this question. Does that make sense? Let's talk about the yeah. ball. Okay. Bahaya kau cakap pasal racket ni. Dia kena cerita benda lain pula. What work does the ball do? Okay. But this one is not in your PPL, right? Kan ada? Rasanya tak ada. Okay. So this is my question and I messed up on the question. <laughs> okay. Ah, I'm not safe pula ni. Tak ada siapa suruh safe. Safe anyways. Okay. Um, well, it's losing energy. Okay, great. Oh, saya punya lukisan ni lagi cantik. Lah. Okay, so force and momentum. Now we're going on to the next subtopic. Conservation of linear momentum. So Newton's second law of motion says that F equals to MA or in this case F equals to delta P over delta T which is just equal to MA lah. Okay, it's the same thing. We learned that F equals to MA previously. Now there's an addition to F equals to MA which is delta P over delta T. If F is equals to zero then dP dt is also zero. 
Yelah kan? It's obvious. Kalau ni zero, ni pun zero lah. It means that there is no change in momentum. The momentum is, or the momentum is constant. Okay, so two situations can happen. It's either delta P equals to zero, which is, um, berapa? Um, M, P final minus P initial equals to zero. Maksudnya, P final is equal to P initial. There's no change in momentum. So when P final minus P final and the value is the same, your change in momentum is zero because there's no change. Because the constant je kan? Sama macam velocity last time. If our change in velocity was zero, there's no acceleration like no acceleration. Sama juga kat sini. When our delta P is zero, it means that your initial and final momentum is the same. There's no change. Delta P is zero. Okay. Uh, or delta P or just P is just equal to zero. Tadi change and the P is equal to zero. Pun boleh. So two situations can happen to get our F equals to zero. Okay. It's either you don't have any changes or your P is just zero. Okay, so that is that. The total linear momentum in an isolated system, eh, isolated system is always conserved. Which means that we are ignoring air resistance um, and a bunch of other factors that is a non-conservative force that can happen in our real life. But for physics, we are simplifying it so that we can learn more effectively lah. Okay, we will add on those little, little things as we continue to increase our knowledge in physics. Nah? But first, we have to start with the basics. Okay, so the total linear momentum in an isolated system is always conserved, which means that our P initial is equal to P final. P initial equals to P final. If our total linear momentum is conserved. In chapter four, we talked about the conservation of energy, whereby EI equals to E final. But for this chapter, we are talking about momentum, which is also conserved in a collision. Okay, so let's take a look on how that is. Okay, so principle of conservation of linear momentum can be applied in two colliding objects or explosion of objects in two pieces. Mm. Mm. I, don't, I don't have an example for this. Color this one, it's easy. You just have ball with a ball, collide. So you have momentum, but the, the due to the conservation of momentum, you can calculate for the V final or the U final, vice versa. A U final pula. V final or U, V initial. Okay. U final. Apa ni cikgu U final ni? V initial. Ha. Okay, so based on the conservation of linear momentum, you get to calculate for the final velocity or the initial velocity. There's an equation for that. Uh, also for explosion of objects, um, the only thing on my mind right now is buah letuk-letuk. But I don't know if you guys know that one. Tahu tak buah letuk? Don't Tahu? Don't know. Itulah <laughs> hmm, orang bandar je tak adalah. Buah letuk-letuk ni jarang jumpa. But anyways, uh, anything that explodes lah basically. Apa lah? Apa? Explode? Tak nak fikir. Uh, apa? Gun. Oh, macam pop pop. Oh my god. Okay, boleh lah. Macam pop pop. Oh, rupanya macam ni kan. Okay, boom. Kita okay, tahu lah. Okay, but it explodes. So that is also ada conservation of linear momentum, eh? Which means that you know if you know the initial velocity, you will know what the final velocity is. All right. So here we know that F equals to delta P over delta T. Okay, so this is an example of collision. In this case, they decreased the force by increasing the time. There's an airbag 
the airbag increases the time of contact. Betul tak? When you don't have, a, if you don't have the airbag, kepala terus terantuk dekat uh, dashboard tu kan? Panggil dashboard ke? Dashboard. Hmm. Your yeah, head immediately. Apa dia? Anyone said anything? No? Tak jadi cakap. Okay. Imagine the airbag was not there. Your head in a collision, your head immediately terantuk dekat the dashboard tu lah. And the time taken is very fast, right? Because terantuk kan? Terantuk it happens very fast. Okay. And for example, if you have an airbag, this is the safety measure. They put in an airbag so that when your head hits the airbag, the force is minimized. And why is that? You increase the time of contact. Your head tenggelam dalam airbag tu for a few seconds, right? More than the time when your head terantuk dekat dashboard tu. Bila terantuk dekat dashboard tu, you, your head immediately terplanting ke belakang kan? But when you have an airbag, the contact time is longer before your head bounces back. So they increase the time of contact which means that the force decreases. So your head does not um, feel that heavy force that was initially kalau tak ada airbag ni lah. So this is a safety uh, measure lah to decrease the force acting on your head by increasing the time. So it's pretty smart lah. And a bunch of other stuff, they also use this concept for collision eh. So in everyday application, we can reduce the effect of impulsive force by increasing the time of contact. Okay, so seat belt also works in the same way. Uh, you are in contact with the seat belt during collision. Ke, ke depan kan? Tapi ke depan tu lama sikit compared to when you don't have a seat belt. Kalau tak ada seat belt, terus terlanggar kerusi depan. If you have a seat belt, you are in contact with the seat belt for a longer time and then baru ke belakang balik kan? So that is increasing the time. Reducing the force on your body. So, tak adalah patah riuk. So, always use your seatbelt. Okay, next one. The impulsive force on an object normally delivered in a very short time. Thus, the average force is large. And we, we can increase the effect of impulsive force by increasing the change in momentum. Apart from changing the time, we can also increase the change in momentum. I don't think we have an example for that. I think uh, it's just increasing the final speed. Increase final speed, you will get the increase in change in momentum, okay? Okay, so we have three types of collisions. Elastic, inelastic. Elastic is E1, EI equals to E final. Inelastic EI is greater than E final, which means that we are losing, there's energy loss. Lose energy, lose E, right? We're losing energy from the initial because at the final condition, uh, the value of E is smaller. But for elastic, okay, kenyal. Elastic, kenyal kan? Elastic is kenyal. EI equals to E final, the conservation of energy, initial and final. So here the energy for momentum is mv squared, lah, 1 over 2 mv squared. And, but actual collisions, most collisions fall between elastic and perfectly inelastic collision. So elastic is you hit. Oh, I did it. Okay. Let's talk about that in this one. Okay, so elastic collision. Ada conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy. Where EI equals to EF. Right? When this guy meets this other guy, so let's say this is A and this is B, and they collide. Kenapa tak boleh cantum ni? They collide here. Okay. Collide. Right? This is your first situation. Second situation, collision happens. Third situation, they move in the opposite direction. They don't stick together. 
Lepas collision, they don't stick together. That is elastic collision. Okay, so this is your first situation. A is moving to the right, B is moving to the left. They collide, collision happens, impulse happens. And then they separate. They move in separate directions. Doesn't matter if the white ball decides go to, to go to the left or to the right. The key point here is that they don't stick together and they move separately. Okay, so conservation of momentum. Momentum is given by P equals to mv, right? So this is mass 1 times u1, mass 2, u2 equals to mass 1 times v1 plus mass 2 times v2. What time is it? All right. And then we also have conservation of kinetic energy. Okay, sama juga, but this is Ke. 1 over 2 mv squared. Right, I think this equation is in your book. So again, elastic collision, conservation of momentum, conservation of kinetic energy. And then we have inelastic, which means that we are losing energy. In, eh? in is a negative word, lose. Lose energy. Okay, that's how you remember it. Okay. In elastic collision, momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not. So here, uh, they are moving, and then collision happens. Okay, and they are also moving in a separate direction. Doesn't matter where, but they are moving separately. Here, the conservation of momentum applies. Conservation of kinetic energy does not apply. Here, the EI is greater than EF. Okay, so this is uh, for solving, you usually use the conservation of momentum, and then you check back if your answer is correct by using this equation. If your EI is greater than your EF, then betul lah. So macam, um, panggil apa lah? Cross check je lah. Okay, so we have talked about elastic and we also have talked about inelastic, right? But here we said perfectly inelastic collision. What is that? Perfectly inelastic collision is when you collide but uh, the final condition, you stick together. So you are moving with a same velocity. Okay, so collision happens. Okay, and then they stick together and move at a V. Okay, this guy, something, don't know what the U is. You collide and then they stick together. So you get the same V, okay. You can also expand it like this, plus M2V, where the V here and the V here is the same. Okay, but senang lagi buat macam ni lah. This equation is much, much easier. Okay, they are moving at the same velocity. And then the conservation of energy does not apply here. EI is greater than EF because this is an elastic collision in. So you are losing, okay? So the difference between inelastic versus perfectly inelastic, inelastic, the final condition, they move separately. For perfectly inelastic collision, they move together. So the mass sticks. Another word for perfectly inelastic collision is completely inelastic collision. So that's another term for that. So it means the same thing. So this is completely inelastic. Eh? Okay, so let's summarize what we have learned so far. And then we'll take a break for seven minutes. Okay, so let's um, recap. So we have learned that I equals to F delta T. Okay, this was also equal to delta P which is the change in momentum, which is also M delta V, right? The delta must stay. And then we know that P equals to MV. And then we have three types of collisions. Okay, so we have uh, elastic, inelastic, 
and perfectly inelastic. Okay, so the conditions for this. Allah, buruknya. Oh, I know. I want to use a table. Okay, one, two, three. So that is three. Right. Ah. I need to use technology to make my life easier. Okay, Let's write this down. Good job. Okay, collisions. So we have inelastic, sorry, elastic first. Then we have inelastic. Then we have perfectly inelastic. And then the conservation of momentum. Okay, saya nak tanya lah. Conservation of kinetic energy. Hmm, who is my lucky guess? Um, can I have um, Zahra to tell me if the conservation of momentum applies for inelastic? Sarah, are you there? Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, Zahra, in elastic, sorry, in elastic conservation of momentum, conserve or not? Conserve. What about conservation of KE? Um, no. No. Okay, thank you, betul. Shakirin, perfectly no, in elastic. Shakirin ada? Shakirin, where are you? Yeah, I'm here. Perfectly in elastic. Is the does the conservation of momentum applies? Hello. Yes, no. Sudah dengar apa apa? Shakirin, are you there? Ke Shakirin punya line teruk ni? Okay lah, Farzana lah. Farzana, can you tell me elastic? Yes. Okay, Farzana. Conservation of momentum, yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay. Conservation of KE, kinetic energy. Yes. Yes. Oh, dengar pun. Okay, perfectly inelastic. Tadi siapa yang saya tak dengar tadi tu? Saya lupa lah. Saya, saya. Ah, Shakirin, yes. Ah, dengar ah. pun. Ah. Perfectly inelastic? Momentum, yes. Okay. KE? Uh, KE tak. Alright. No. Alright, betul. Okay, thank you everyone. So here we can see that in collision, the conservation of momentum is always, always applies. Okay, it's always a yes, but for conservation of energy, inelastic does not. Uh, we are losing energy in elastic for in for inelastic collision. Who is that? It's about in inelastic. Okay, so here we know that conservation of momentum applies, and the equation for that is m one u one, which is our momentum. The initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. So P initial is P final. Eh? Okay. Okay, so head-on collision. In a head-on collision, all motions are confined to a single straight line. The total linear momentum of the object is always conserved. Mathematically, we may write this, we know this already. So a head-on collision ni maksudnya is one dimensional. 
Haha, if we are talking about one dimension now, which means that we have two Ds later, which means that we are dealing with vectors. Tian kurang mesti ingat dah senang tadi. Okay, let's do this one. Example 5.2. Two mass A, oh sorry, saya cakap nak bagi break kan? Okay, seven minute break. And for those yang tak nak break, boleh baca soalan dulu. Okay, so we will come back. Yeah, break. 11.57. Laju je. Okay. Tadi tak ada siapa nak jawab saya. Ni break laju je jawab. Okay. 11.57 come back eh. Oops.
Okay, so it's 11.57. Is everyone back? Mm, is Arvin there? Is Arvin there? No, where's Arvin? Is Amirul Alif there? Yes. Okay. Is, oops, oops, what happened? Is Damia there? Yeah. Okay. So Arvin je lah. Mana Arvin ni? Is Azri there? Yes, out there. Okay. Ah, Arvin nak kena rotate ni. Okay. So let's take a look at this question. So two mass A and B of two kilogram and 1.5 kilogram move on a smooth surface in the same direction. Okay, just a rough sketch. So they move in the same direction. Teruk sangat sketch ni pun. Oh, I have this sketch. Takpelah. They move in the same direction. So this is your question. Okay, so dua mass move in the same direction, speed 3 dengan 5. So U A 3 U B is 5. Okay, they move in the same direction. You can put it to the right or to the left. Doesn't matter. And then... Doctor. Yep. Arvin already replied in the chat box. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, tak jadi rot rotan Arvin. <laughs> Just kidding pun. Okay, anyways. In the same direction, 3 and 5. Calculate the velocity of A and B after collision if the collision is completely inelastic. Okay, so inelastic, we are losing energy. Okay. Conservation of momentum, yes. Conservation of P, yes. Conservation of E, no. Completely, I said that is another word for perfectly inelastic collision, which means that the mass combines or sticks after collision. After collision. Okay, so that is what we have so far from the uh, question. Okay, so I already drew this. Mass A is 2 kilogram, mass B is 1.5, UA is... 3 and UB is 5. Perfectly in elastic collision, which means that my mass sticks together, giving me what B and A sticking together. Okay, and they move at the same velocity. Right? Let's use green. So they move at V. B has V velocity. A also has V velocity. Okay. So to write the equation for conservation of momentum, this is our equation, PI equals to PF. MA UA plus MB UB equals to gabung the mass because it's in perfectly in elastic collision. So this is combining the mass. And then we have V. So mass A is 2, mass A is 2 and the U is 3. Mass B is 1.5 and the U is 5. They are in the same direction, so I'm going to assume that they are both positives. And then combining the mass 2 plus 1.5 and then you solve for V. What is the value for V? Can anyone help me? 3.9. 3.9. Is it positive? Uh, yes. So after collision, they move in the same direction as U. This is the U. It's in this, this direction. The V also moves in the same direction, which is to the right, if your U is to the right. Okay, thank you for the answer. So the answer is 3.9 meter per second. Okay, so conservation of energy does not apply, which means that our initial kinetic energy is greater than our final. So here you can just check back if your initial is indeed greater or not than your final. So this just plug in lah. Then you will get that your final kinetic energy is smaller. Okay. 
But this is just for checking. Eh? You don't have to do this if they don't ask you to do it. Okay, so this is 1.5 and then 5 squared. Okay, so this is obviously going to be greater than this guy over here. Okay, so that is one example. Uh, oh, question. Um, doctor. Yeah. Um, kenapa kita tak guna uh, conservation of kinetic energy? Sebab saya kira guna conservation of kinetic energy, the answer is still the same, 3.98. No, tapi ni inelastic. Tak boleh pakai sepatutnya. Oh. Tengok, jangan kira awak. Hantar kat WhatsApp. Are you willing to share? Doktor. Ya. Yeah. Nak tengok soalan balik boleh? Okay, sekejap. Okay, this session is recorded if you want to go back to it nanti. Tadi siapa yang tanya saya tu? Amirul Alif eh? Ya, sedap tak. Dah share ke? Tak share? Sedap nak rewrite tak tak? Nak rewrite. Okay, nanti share balik kan? Later. Um, you need more time to uh, to copy this? Done? Yes. Okay. Okay, so tadi we had elastic and inelastic. Now we have oblique collision, which means that it's no longer head-on. Sorry, it's no longer one-dimensional. It's two. Haha. -ha. So vectors again. 2D. Okay, so before collision, uh, I have mass one traveling at velocity initial one. And then it meets mass 2 that uh, can be at rest or has a velocity. And then they collide and they move at a not one-dimensional direction, lah, which means that you have angle, which means that you have to resolve, which means that you have a vector. Okay, so the velocity, velocities have x and y components. Linear momentum is conserved, still conserved in both the x and y. So now you have... Just now, you only solved in one dimensional. We, let's assume that was in X. Now you have X and also Y. So how does that look like? It's the same equation. The only thing that is you have X terms here. And you have Y terms over here. Okay. If they give you, um, contohnya velocity, mass 1 is traveling at a velocity of 5 meter per second. That makes an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal, you have to resolve it. So your Vx or your Ux is 5 cosine 20 and your Uy is 5 sine 20. Okay, you know this. This is just resolving. We are already a master at this, hopefully. Okay, so resolve dulu before putting it into the equation so that you can apply for conservation of momentum in the x and conservation of momentum in the y. And then it will ask you, what is the final velocity? When that happens, you have to use vx squared, vy squared. Okay, they won't ask you, what is the direction in the x? What is direction in the y? No, they will ask you, what is the final velocity? So you will have to use this equation again, your Pythagoras theorem equation. Uh, and also the angle, if they ask you for the angle, Vy, sorry, inverse tangent of Vy over Vx. Okay, we know this. This is chapter 2. Alright, let's do an example. Read and understand the question. Visualize and sketch as always. Identify the colliding objects. Determine the type of collision. If it's a one-dimensional, two-dimensional, elastic, inelastic, whatever, identify the mass, initial velocity, final velocity, apply the conservation of linear momentum. 
And again, conservation of energy applies if it's only elastic collision. If it's inelastic, then it just becomes, uh, you just get to get cross-check because you can't solve when there's a sign like this. Okay, you can't solve it. You can only cross-check. Okay, so apply the conservation of linear momentum for head-on collision or one-dimensional. This is the equation. And if this is an perfectly inelastic, you combine the mass. For oblique collision, you have to resolve the U's and the V's and then find out the final V by using Pythagoras' theorem, Pythagoras' equation. Okay, so this one, applying the conservation of kinetic energy for elastic, the conservation of energy applies. For inelastic, does not apply. You can only use it for cross-checking. Okay, let's do this one. Problem, example 5.3. Uh, okay, so is this the right one? Oh yes, betul. Okay, an eight kilogram object moves east. Okay, so I already drew this. This eight kilogram object is labeled in blue. Let's assume this object is a ball because I'm too lazy to figure out another object. Moves east, which means it's to the right at 15 meter per second on a frictionless horizontal surface. So we are ignoring friction and collides with a 10 kilogram object. So the guy in red is 10 kg. This guy is 8 kg, okay? Uh, and moves at 4 meter per second due south. Sorry, this is after collision. The 8 kilogram object moves at 4 meter per second due south. So after collision, it moves down here. V equals to 4. But if I were to resolve it, VAX equals to 0 because I don't have any horizontal velocity. VAY is minus 4, assuming that going down is negative, going up is positive, going to the right is positive, going to the left is negative. I'm using the conventional signs. So here after collision, the velocity is to the south. South is going down. So I have VAY equals minus 4. My VAX is 0 because I don't have any horizontal velocity. Okay, so that is our condition. Oh, for our initial, I said u equals to 15 and it is due east. So u a x is positive 15 because it's going to the right. Our horizontal, sorry, our vertical component or our y component is zero because I'm moving in the x direction only. Okay, so that's our situation. So now applying the conservation of momentum. Our collision is inelastic. Does it say? Forgot to see. Uh, where does it say that the collision is inelastic? What is the velocity of the 10 kilogram after collision? Okay, that is question. And then what percentage of initial kinetic energy is lost in the collision? We have energy loss, which means that we have an inelastic. inelastic. Yes, inelastic collision. Okay, so now we have identified our collision and we have two objects. Okay, so the equation for x, ma times uax, our uax is 15. Question? Okay, so mb, ubx, our ubx was a zero, right? Because we are moving to the east. Sorry, this guy was at rest. Now it's alarm. Ah, 10 kilogram object that is at rest. So that is why our UBX is a zero. And then they check out the object A moves downwards, uh, moves south. So in our momentum X, the velocity is zero. And we don't know what the velocity of object B is. So I'm just going to make this as an unknown. Then solve for VBX. This should be easy because... This guy is a zero, this guy is a zero. Can anyone tell me what the answer is? Eight times 15 is four times 30, 60, 120. 12 meter per second. 12 meter per second. 120 divided by 10. 12 meters per second. 
Okay, so this is a positive curve. Is it a positive? Yes, positive. Yes, which means that our object moves to the right or the x direction, right? Okay, so momentum y, m a u a y plus m b u b y. Initial velocities in the y direction, and the final velocities in the y direction. So we know that we don't have a y component for the initial velocity. And we know that this guy was at rest, so no velocity, initial velocity as well. And that it was moving down south. So this guy gets a negative sign over here. We don't know what VBY is. What is VBY? Can anyone help me? 3.2. 3.2, thank you. That is a positive? Uh, yes. Positive. So it is going upwards. This is B. Yeah? Okay, so kalau the object B is moving upwards and to the right. Okay, so this is my object. I am moving like this and also like this. So my resultant V is somewhere here, right? Okay, so this is Vy and this is our Vx. So now we have to solve for our V, Vx squared plus Vy squared. This is B, eh? B, B. B, B is? Does anyone, can anyone help me? 12.42. 12.42, thank you, Shakirin. 12.42 meter per second okay and then if they are asking you for the angle just find the angle as well most of the time they will so i learn ej and that complete agaknya so what's the angle can anyone help me b b y b x Angle B is fourteen point nine three. Point nine three. Thank you. And the angle is with respect to what is this equation? Remember, your angle always gives you with respect to horizontal. Horizontal or the x axis. You also had a question in web design where they use VBX over VBY, right? That just means that it's with respect to the y axis. But our equation that we always use commonly in class is a VBY over VBX, which means that it is with respect to the x axis. So your angle is here. Okay? Any questions for me about this question in particular? Okay, eh? easy je kan? You have to remember momentum is conserved in all collisions and KE is only conserved for elastic. Tu je. Always resolve the velocities, initial velocities and final velocities and then find the final by using theorem Pythagoras. Macam biasa. Oh, it's asking you, what percentage of the initial kinetic energy is lost in the collision? So, kena kira juga lah, walaupun kita tak tahu. Kira juga. Okay, so here is how we, we solve it. So, this is our KE initial. And this is our KE final. Oh, dah label dah. Saya lupa saya dah label. Okay, so this is KE initial equation. This is KE final equation. The loss you can find out by KE final minus KE initial over KEI, over the initial energy. Okay, so that is how you determine loss and then you times it with 100, you will get your percentage loss. Uh, so what is the answer? Susah lah dalam kereta ni. Masa siapa nak hadirkan saya tak? Does anyone know the answer? Aduh, banyak nak jenis kira ni. KE initial, KE final, 
KKI KKI I can um suruh siapa eh? Suruh Syura lah. Can Syura find KE initial? Can Adam Daniel find KE final? For me please. Syura and Adam Daniel. Okay. Okay, thank you. Eh, eh, tu tutup pula dah. <laughs> What am I doing? Okay. Okay, Syura, dapat tak KEI? My hundred. Berapa? My hundred. Nine hundred joules. Yes. Betul ke unit dia joules? Yes. Yes, okay. And Adam Daniel? Oh, itu kejut saya. Kuat ni suara dia. Berapa? Six hundred twenty seven point. Twenty-seven point two two joules. Okay, so here uh, kita dah confirm that KE final. Thank you, Adam Daniel and Shurai. So we have confirmed that our KE final is less than our KE initial, which means that we are losing energy. So now to calculate for the loss in energy, what the equation ni, which is uh, six two seven point two minus nine hundred over 900 times with the 100 that are, that is apa eh tolong kirakan jap percent 30.3% yeah betul dah yeah. mia Thirty point three percent. So we lost thirty point three percent energy. So uh, kalau kat sini dia point je negatif lah kan? Negative. So the loss is thirty point three. Usually percentage. Okay. Next question. A zero point zero two five kilogram bullet is fired vertically at two hundred. 20 meter per second into a 0 0.2 kilogram baseball. I believe this question is in your module book. I think so. Okay, so let's sketch it. Uh, we have a baseball at rest. Whoa, buruk gila baseball saya. Okay, sekejap. Okay, sekejap macam mana baseball nak lukis ni. Uh, if I am drawing this. <laughs> Teruk sangat lah, kejap-kejap. Can I insert a diagram? Icon, icon, icons. Baseball, ada tak? Baseball. Oh, apa tu? Baseball. Yeah, I do. Good. Okay, insert. Okay, tapi yang ni tak vertical. So, saya kena uh, adjust sikit. Okay, ini. Draw, draw, draw. Okay, so it's at rest. Like this. 
So a two, 0 0.2, 0, 0 0.025 kilogram bullet is fired vertically into a 0 0.2 kilogram baseball that is at rest. Tak tahu lah kenapa baseball ni macam suspended pula dia tiba. But it is what it is. That is your bullet. Cik sangat pula. Okay, so this is your bullet over here going up. And it's shot towards the baseball vertically. So your U x is zero your ui is 220 so let's label this as a and this guy as b so i'm going to have to put in my a and y a x and e y here sorry so i am going upwards hopefully i'm going upwards doesn't say okay tak kita assume you're going upwards lah if not, the bullet goes from here, just downwards. But from our assumption, let's assume that it is going upwards. So this is a positive 220. My baseball is at rest. My UA, my UB um, X is zero. And my UBY is also a zero. Okay. How high does the combined bullet, okay, combine, so combined mass, combined man, combined man, but uh, combined mass means perfectly in elastic collision. So we have identified our collision. Perfectly in elastic. Assuming that the bullet is embed, bullet embeds itself in the ball. So the bullet after collision, so, macam tu, oh my god, tak apalah. Okay, so this is your bullet, the crash, I mean the collide, and then it combines together, okay, and moves at a velocity. Final. Teruknya, okay. This is your lecturer, you deal with it lah. <laughs> Proof. Okay, so this is our situation one. Situation two, it collides. And then situation three, it combines and moves together. Okay, it's asking you how high does the combined bullet and baseball rise? It's asking you what is the height? Okay, what is the height? Okay, so if we can remember from chapter four, the conservation of energy says that uh, Ke can be converted to another form. Your energy can be converted. So let's say we have Ke, we can convert it to Ug. We can also convert Ke to Ue. Okay, and the list goes on. Basically saying E can be transformed. Okay, we learned this in chapter 4. So here our kinetic energy is converted into Ug because we have an increase in height. Okay, so if this is our initial, I need to label this properly. Sekejap, eh? Let me draw this nicely. So this is perfectly inelastic. We already know this. So it's combined. Okay, boleh buang ini. Okay. Break okay. here. This is our first situation. And then... We have a situation like this. Um, macam mana saya nak tunjuk height in difference? Eh? Okay, buat ni bawah sikit. Okay, so we have a increase in height. Okay, so this is our difference in height. Let me use a different color. Orange. Okay, so this is what this was our initial height, and after the embedding, they move together. This was situation one. This is situation three. Eh? Maksudnya, this is after collision. So this was my initial height, and this was my final height. So this is what we are trying to find, delta h. Okay. We are trying to find delta H. You need to write this nicely. H final and H initial. 
Okay, so why did I label it from here to here? When you are finding the difference in height, you always start at the same position. Contohnya, if I'm starting at the end of the, if I'm starting at the bottom of the baseball, to find the final height, I need to continue. I need to find it at the bottom of the baseball. If I started my um, height here, the top of the baseball, my height will be this difference. Okay, but they will be the same as long as you label it correctly. Maksudnya, if you are using this value sama dengan this value because they are moving together, so the height should be the same. The only thing that you can screw up in this kind of question is you are labeling the height from the bottom of the baseball, but you are measuring here. So, ni dah jadi height benda lain lah. Okay, so always measure at the same point. You are starting from the bottom of the baseball, you end at the bottom of the baseball. Okay, I believe that is common sense, but sometimes people get confused. Okay. All right, so um, we are doing conservation of momentum. Let's write the equation now. We have our UBX, UBY, our UAX, UAY. Okay, so let me write the equation. If you have any questions, boleh tanya. Eh? Okay, so conservation of momentum in the X. Let me write momentum X je. Okay, so momentum X. Okay, so momentum X, we have MA UAX plus MA UBX. This is X, not Y. Equals to MA combined with MB. Final velocity. Right? Combine the rise after collision. Okay. So our X, do we have an X component for UAX? No. So that's a zero. Do we have a component for X in the, for the UB? No. So let's just leave it like this first. So this becomes zero. VX is just zero. So no no velocity in the x okay because you, this guy is a zero i do have not recovered okay so this guy is a zero and mass does not change so basically if my mass does not change my vx has to be a zero to make this guy zero right so your vx is simply zero so you don't have any shift or any movement in the x direction okay that was pretty easy but what about momentum y? Let's do momentum y. Okay, so m a sama juga m a u a y plus m a u b y, and our b is a zero, easy, and then m a plus m b equals sorry, this is v y. And we know that MA is 0 0.025 and UA is vertically upwards, positive 220. Our mass is 0 0.025 plus the 0 0.2 baseball and VY. Can anyone tell me what VY is? Oh, can thank you. Twenty four point four. Twenty four point four. Did I want everyone get that? Yeah. Yeah, can he? Okay. So this is a positive value, right? So which means that the bo boss, but the baseball and the bullet goes upwards. Okay, so now it's asking you how high does the combined bullet and baseball rise after the collision? Hmm, after collision, eh? Maksudnya, we are moving at a velocity of 24.4. And from chapter two, we learned that the velocity keeps on decreasing as we go up because of gravity. 
which means that our kinetic energy at the maximum height is zero and it is converted to mgh. So how do I find my height? Anyone wants to guess? New slide. How do I find my uh, maximum height? Okay, say, okay, Sam. So, tadi we have a baseball, okay, and the bullet. Now it is already combined and it is moving at two, two, apa tadi? Uh, it's moving at 24.4. Okay, so this is my velocity. I'm moving at 24.4. Okay, ni baseball dengan bullet tau. Jangan tanya saya balik apa benda ni. Okay. So we know from free fall that when we move upwards, we will reach a maximum height. When do we reach the when do we reach the maximum height? Which is when our v equals to zero. Remember? When our v equals to zero, our ke is zero. So where did our kinetic energy go? It went to, the kinetic energy is converted to MGH or UG, our gravitational potential energy, which means now these two objects increase in potential energy. Walaupun they lost kinetic energy, they increased in gravitational potential energy. Okay. So this guy, um, this is 1 over 2 mv squared. Okay, so Ke is converted to Ug. Okay, so here I'm saying I have max Ke here, 0 Ke here, 0 potential energy Ue, Ug, and then we have max. UG. Okay, it's the transformed. Okay, why are we calculating at the maximum height? Because if I were to calculate it here, mampus, tak tahu kinetic energy kat sini berapa, UG kat sini berapa. Kena tahu height dia, kena tahu velocity dia. So, it becomes complicated. So, the question is doing you a favor and just asking you what happens to the, what, what at how, what is the maximum height? Yang the, the baseball and the bullet can rise. Which means that V is already equal to zero. And the problem is simplified. All right. So here Ke is transformed. So let's do this. Uh, this guy is um, 0 0.025 plus 0 0.2 mass, right? My final velocity is 24.4 squared equals to 0 0.025 plus 0 0.2 g is 9.81 and my height is the thing that i don't know so this is actually delta h but kita nak cari maximum height kan so let's just say we start at zero and we achieve a certain height okay what does that mean it means that h minus zero so just h okay this is why i'm just putting a h there okay so jump Rearranging this kejap. Tak suka kat ujung. Kejap. Here. Is it better here? Good. Okay. Allah tinggal satu. Tak salah. Okay, so this is number one. Okay. Okay, so that is your equation. This guy gets to can be cancelled out because the m is the same. So 24.4 squared divided by 2 divided by 9.81 will give you the maximum height. So what is the answer? 30.34. 20 point? 30.34. 30.34. 30 okay, thank you. So the maximum height is meters from the initial position, which I assumed was a zero. Okay, if you assume that your initial was at 10, your final will be at 30.34 plus 10. So sama juga jawapan dia. Okay, so senang assume from zero. 
three, four. Okay, sama je. So to make things easier, I just assume the height started from a zero. Okay, so you get your maximum height as thirty point three four. Question, doctor. Yeah. Uh, I don't get it. Um, first, uh, if the ball is from the kinetic energy is converted to gravitational gravitational energy. So just compare je. Bukan compare, dia transform. Remember in chapter 4 kita belajar energy can be transformed. Ah, uh -uh. Lepas tu kita samakan dia dengan mg his terus. Ah, uh -uh, Because uh, saya lupa nak cakap. Uh, this is our EI and this is our E final. Final. Uh. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so kat so dia punya equation dia berdasarkan E EI sama dengan EF lah kan? Uh -huh, betul, betul. Alright. Okay. So con uh, here I said the KE is converted to UG. Tapi the equation is actually UG final plus KE final. So KE final is zero sebab maximum height V equals to zero. At the initial point, UGI is zero because we assume that we started at zero. So KE is at a value and then we have a value for UG. So it just means KE is converted completely to UG. Betul, your question is correct. Okay, we are using the conservation of energy. Okay, any other questions? Faham ke yang part dia naik atas, jadi velocity equals to zero, you get the maximum height. That was chapter 2. Ingat tak? Ingat lagi tak? Ya. Yeah. 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 Hmm, okay. Pastor. Ya. Ya? Aku eh? Oh. Tanya apa? Ah, <laughs> uh, yang uh, perfectly inelastic ni bu uh, bukan dia punya energy yang kan energy dia sebenarnya conserve ke tak? Dalam collision, energy dia tak conserve. Tapi ni after collision. So Alan dia cakap, after collision, dia naik berapa banyak? Uh, during Masa collision, uh, kinetic energy tak conserve. Kiranya, um, <coughs> Okay, how do I say this? Sekejap, eh? saya buat slide baru sekejap. Okay, so in the collision, energy was not conserved. Sebab dia inelastic kan? Collision. E not conserve. Uh, okay, so this means that our 1 over 2 m u a squared plus 1 over 2 m b u b squared is greater than 1 over 2 m a uh, v a It's not concerned. This is not you. This is me. Okay. So, so you're so confused. Good. Um. Or they combine. Say silap. Combine. M B can V squared. So in this situation, the energy is not conserved. This is during collision. Tau. During collision. Kiranya situation, situasi, situation one, lepas tu dia collide, dia embed and then dia tanya velocity, yo, <laughs> kenapa Facebook saya macam tu? Dia macam asam jawa dah saya tengok ni, ha, teguk betul. So and then dia move at a V, yang ni collision, yang ni dia baru nak move pergi baseball, yang ni collision and this guy is the velocity yang dia start to move, right? This is our collision situation. Tapi kat dalam situation collision ni, kita tak take into account what happens to the baseball. Kiranya how far will the baseball go? Kita tak kita tak tanya, kita tak boleh solve pakai equation linear momentum ataupun uh, kinetic energy during uh, collision, tak boleh. So now we have to use chapter 4 punya equation which is the conservation of energy to transform the kinetic energy to mgh and that is not collision that is just transformation of energy okay so this guy is collision this guy is transformation of energy 
lain eh transformation transformation of energy tak ada linear momentum kita tak belajar dalam transformation of energy we only, we only had conservation of energy right and we had the equation ug plus ke minus wnc equals to ug final plus ke final tu je okay this guy is non conservative force it did not uh, take into account pasal collision at all so collision punya equation untuk solve macam ni je up until the velocity here so now i'm using the velocity that it starts to move in my conservation of energy v final v final is the u for this guy actually betul tak faham ke uh, heidi faham doktor Okay, so V final dalam collision dalam collision is U kat dalam our uh, dia nak naik tu lah dia terbang dalam collision. Okay, I hope that's okay with everyone. Any other questions? Doktor. Ya. Yeah. <coughs> Kalau kita kita nak cari H max tu kan? Mm -hmm. Kalau kita guna equation V kuasa 2, U kuasa 2 tambah 2 S boleh ke? Boleh Dapat? Sepatutnya dapat Okay Alright So in that equation, if uh, you are using the equation V squared equals to U squared plus 2 AS tu Your A is gravity Right? Negative A. Negative 9.81. Okay? Patutnya dapat. Betul. Okay? Because we are so, assuming. Okay. So, kalau kita tak guna yang equation KE sama dengan UG ni, kita boleh guna kinematic equation lah kan? Boleh. Ha -ha. Selalu memang dapat sama hmm. pun. Okay. Hmm. Alright. So next example. Oh, we have 15 minutes left. Kejap saya tengok. Sempat tak nak bersiapkan. Hmm, saya rasa senang juga ni. Let's just try, okay? Kalau tak sempat siap within 10 minutes, uh, let's just continue next class. So a 2 times 10 to the 3 kilogram car moves east at 8 meter per second. Okay, so dia move east. Kalau akan lukis car pula, hmm, tak pula. Okay, comel juga kah saya ni macam van. Okay, so ni 2,000 kilogram. Let's say this is A. Okay, so A is 2,000 kilogram. Moving east. So moving east. Okay, moving east which means that my UAX is 8. My UAY is 0. And then it collides with a 3.5 times 10 to the 3 kilogram car moving north. So we have another car, okay, so about the uh, moving north, so I don't know. Okay, so it's moving north, um, moving north, which means that our UBX is zero, our UBY is moving north, kita assume positive. So does it say, collides with the car moving north. So we, UBY tak tahu. And moves, the car sticks together and moves as a unit after collision. Okay, it sticks. So we know that this guy is perfectly in elastic collision. We are losing energy and we are sticking together. Our mass sticks together. And after the collision, at an angle of 35 degrees north of east. Okay, so if you guys still remember, north of east means this is my reference point. East goes this way. And then you check out 35 north of east. Maksudnya reference point is east 35. Okay, moving towards north. Okay, so by north tu tak payah tulis lah. So reference point is east. Ke atas is north. So that is your 35. So this is your final velocity. 
So this is your V. Okay, so you have to resolve V. V is 5, and which means that Vx is 5 cosine 35, and your Vy is 5 sine 35. All right, that's our information now. New slide. Okay. So next key, oops. So then I can refer to my information. Where is it? It's here. It's here. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, write our equation: conservation of momentum in the x. So I'm going to label this as momentum x. Okay, so momentum x, m a u a x plus m b u b x equals to m a u a y. Eh, v v a x plus m b v b x. Ooh, okay, u a x is eight. My mass is two thousand. 8 and MB is 3000. No, it's 3000. Okay, 3500. Is it? 1, 2, 3. 3.5 times 10 to the 3. 1, 2, 3. 2500. Okay. Hey, Jack, why not you 2,000 Yang ni 3,500 Oh betul lah, saya ingatkan 20,000 Okay, 3,500 UBX is unknown And then MA is O Why didn't anyone correct me? This is perfectly inelastic MB Haa, ah, dia tidur Okay, so this is VX Right? Okay, so 2000 plus 3500 VX. So now I don't know what my VBX is, but I know what my VX is. This is U. Silap. U. U. VX is unknown. VX is, we already know this, which is 5 cosine 35. So let me just write it there. 5 cosine 35. 5 cosine 35. So the only unknown I have here is UBX. So can anyone tell me what UBX is? Thank you. Find the speed and direction before the collision. And then I'm going to write the momentum y. Okay, so that is m a u b y plus m. Ah, uh, doctor. Yep. Aku nak tanya. Mm. Kalau dia kata car yang b tu moving north, kita kena kira u b x lagi ke? Ah, uh, because the value is not given. Oh, so kita kena kira u b x and u b i. What u b y? Walaupun dia kata north saja. Kita boleh assume dia zero untuk UBX. Mm. But this is cut the not. So just about why. Betul juga kan? Sekejap. Okay. Soalan ni ada kesalahan ke? Sekejap. An angle north of east. Itulah jadi zero kan? Hmm. Okay tak apa. Um. So, tak, sebab saya tak buat lagi soalan ni. So, I don't know what the value is. Okay, tak apa. Kita buat dulu. Okay, so M, B. So, 5 cosine 35 is to the right. Positive. U, B, X equal to 1.86. 1.86. Okay, betul juga kan kalau to the north. Kenapa jadi ada value? Okay, saya akan tengok baliklah soalan ni tally ke tak. Betul kan? Eh? Awak punya concern tu legit. 
1.86 tu paling tak ada. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna uh, come back to this question next class. I'm gonna check if this question is actually correct or not. But I think it's in your PBL. So. Betul eh? Betul. Hmm. Betul, betul. Okay. So I'm gonna end class here. Thank you for your concern tadi. Saya tak sempat tengok nama tadi. Thank you. That was very helpful. Uh, so I'm going to end class here. Next class kita akan sambung this last example before kita masuk chapter 6. Oops, kita masuk. Kita nak tutup screen sharing. Any other questions before we end class? From 24.44. We are good. You are good. Okay. Yeah. So I'll see you on um, Friday, right? Please don't forget your web assign and all the best for your other assessments. Okay, if you need more time with the web assign, please let me know. Tapi sepatutnya tak ada masalah lah sebab saya cakap hari Ahad kan? Hmm? Oh, nanti web assign uh, number 10. Tadi Amirul Alif tanya kan? Uh, I will answer that in WhatsApp eh. Alright, so have a great day. Don't forget your lunch. Take care and all the best for your assessments. Bye. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Thank you,